Hi there, you're joining us today at Reading Stadium for the first Greenfleet Roundtable of 2023. Uh, I'm joined by Sarah Gray, who is Head of Alternative Fuels at Rivas. That's right. Hi, Hi. Sarah. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, you've sponsored this event today and we've had some great conversations. Can you tell me a little bit more about why Greenfleet Roundtable events are good for Rivas? Yeah, sure. Um, Rebus are a fleet management organisation. Uh, we own around about 78 garages up and down the UK and um, really looking after critical fleets, those fleets that need to be on the road. They can't afford to have vehicles off the road. So um, our responsibility is to get those vehicles in, maintained and then back on the road for our customers. Um, we are heavily investing into um, decarbonisation ourselves, supporting our customers. So looking at things like training our technicians up to standards so they can maintain electric vehicles, alternative fuels, which we're installing some charging infrastructure into our um, garages as well, so that if those vehicles may be test driven, we need to test drive them to diagnose the issues, we can recharge them if need to be. So there's a lot of investment. Um, we recognise that's required in order to support our customers on their journeys. Great. So you're basically able to help your customers whatever type of vehicle they operate, whatever fuel they operate. That's exactly it. Yeah. So right now we're managing about 120,000 vehicles and about five and a half thousand of those are going to be alternative fuel. So it's quite a small proportion at the moment, but obviously that's only going to grow. As Reavers, we want to make sure that we can maintain cars, vans, heavies and specialised vehicles. And it doesn't matter what powertrain they are. Great. And, and how might the challenges for you be different for an electric vehicle versus a petrol or diesel vehicle? It's just around things like technician training. So um, to, to work on a high voltage vehicle, obviously, you need to have the special training and, and safety equipment, diagnostics equipment, etc. So it's around about making sure that we're able to do that. So we've trained a lot of our technicians already to the right IMI standards to, to work on electric vehicles. Um, and it's about product knowledge as well. So electric vehicles are still quite new in the commercial, in the commercial market. So if you think about, uh, I don't know, uh, the first electric van was probably around about four or five years ago, then mainstream vans have only been out for about two years or yeah. so. So it's more about the product knowledge, so getting your hands on those vehicles. So you train the technicians and then the vehicles need to come in and they need to understand the products. So that might be different OEM badges, um, different powertrains, et cetera. So for us, we have to make sure that we're ready and able to do those. Great. And it must give confidence to your customers that whatever you throw at that whatever they throw at you, you're going to yeah, be able to cope with that's it. That's it. It's the vehicle, but also we're supporting customers on their journey as well. So we, before they even purchase a potential alternative fuel vehicle, we're working with them to say, is it fit for purpose? Is you know operationally fit for purpose? Is it going to do what it needs to do? Has it got the right range? Can it carry your payload? Can it do the right miles, etc.? Um, so even before they reach our garages, we're already well informed about what vehicles they may purchase because we've supported them on that journey. Brilliant. And uh, Sarah, we've talked about a lot of topics today at the round table. Um, what are the key takeaways for you? It was interesting, actually, to hear hydrogen quite a lot of the time. I think there was a couple of fleets today that were really thinking about how hydrogen would support their fleets, specialised fleets, granted. So they're not the traditional sort of short mileage, maybe car fleets. They're bigger vehicles that need to travel a long time um, and be, be able to you know, respond quickly mm. if they're needed, etc. So hydrogen was one key topic that I thought was really interesting and there's some nervousness around that, but yeah. I think um, it's one to watch for the future. And I think just learning as well. So everyone was really open and honest and talking about their experiences. It was really good to hear that some fleets have already got you know, up to 30% of their fleet pure EV, even though they're still quite a specialised fleet. And then others saying that we've got vehicles on order, we're excited to have them. We're not sure how this is going to work out, but we have to trial it anyway and, and move ahead. So it was, it was really interesting and I think um, insightful, but also promising to see that everyone's, I feel, you know, is getting on board with moving to a cleaner, sort of greener cities, etc., because they're all doing their part. Yeah, it was a, a very, very positive input from, from the table, I agree. It really was. Uh, Sarah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kate.